It's a bull. Good morning. Hey, what's up? This is Brian Kuzmar with Commercial Rare Coins and Precious Metals in lovely Lauderdale by the sea. A little cloudy out there, a little stormy for us South Florida peeps, but man, uh, it looks like the Northeast is going to get hammered with some super storms this week. This is probably the front that's moving up the coast, I think, maybe. I don't know, but uh, take a look at this. What a beautiful day out there, even with the overcast conditions. Even a small, long boardable wave. Is that a surfer there? I can't tell, but I could probably catch a wave or two here today. Maybe I'll take the day off. <laughs> well, let's uh, move into what we're going to talk about today. And we've got a couple cool things. I'm going to go into uh, uh, what we got going on right now with the current markets. Also going to talk about uh, premiums, what are good deals out there. I haven't done that for a little bit. Uh, what kind of products that I have in stock. And uh, a couple cool other things. Not much on the news front. So let's get on with that right here. And uh, let me move over to here for our our uh, uh, quote of the day and uh, this is probably very fitting right now uh, given the times it's probably been fitting for decades but uh, here you go this is no there is no force more potent in the modern world than stupidity fueled by greed um, <clears throat> boy and isn't that true uh, especially what we got going on today with the uh, economic situation and uh, uh, markets the way they are uh, but let's kind of move into what I'm wondering if what is happening and I believe uh, today is it possible that we have the uh, what they call a dead cat bounce I'm taking a look at markets got the report out a little bit late today um, not not because of internet reasons just because uh, I drew a blank <laughs> I'm looking at news out there and I'm looking at all kinds of things and I think really everybody's focused on primarily what the stock markets are doing today um, you know it's probably the number one event out there as far as newsworthy to watching even surpassing probably the Ukraine crisis which is kind of backing off right now uh, let's take a look at uh, uh, this was on ZH right here I'm not going to read the whole thing but we'll take a look at some of the uh, what they have to say that's Phoenix Capital Research got to give them props uh, again this is on ZH you can read it for free uh, let's take a look here. The bounce hit, as I wrote, prior to the markets open Monday morning, but I must be honest, things got pretty hairy there for a few hours on Monday. And yes, they did, until uh, what I believe the uh, presidential or the uh, uh, plunge protection team stop, uh, stepped in and did a 900-point reversal, or 1,100 points. How the hell? Well, anyways, let's move on. Uh, the issue is here, where do we go from here? And that's a good question. Stocks are still in deep trouble, uh, according to Phoenix Capital, and I believe they know their stuff when it comes to stocks and bonds. Uh, and why am I talking about stocks and bonds? Because this economic collapse, the collapse of the greatest bubble of all, all time, if and when this happens in a, in a similar way to 2008, it will take down the price of gold and silver paper-wise. Uh, and I kind of think we're seeing a little drop in metals today as well. Not quite sure why. Um, <clears throat> anticipating what uh, Powell's going to say, I don't know. Uh, for, here's what I'm suspecting, though. If Powell comes out and talks about raising rates, uh, you're going to see gold and silver get slammed uh, because that's when the uh, manipulators do it primarily. They like to do it whenever Powell jawbones the uh, uh, the uh, uh, raising rate uh, uh, narrative that they give us all the time. And of course, we know raising rates is, is it, it'll be it, it'll be uh, uh, negligible uh, as far as real rates go. Uh, so let's take a look here. First and foremost, the S&P 500 remains below both its 50-day moving average DMA. Um, and it's 200 uh, uh, moving average. These lines now represent or present major resistance to the upside move. Remember, this marks the first time stocks have broken below these levels since March uh, 2020 crash, uh, which is pretty interesting if you think about it. However, on a percentage level, what they say on Monday, what were stocks down 4%? Uh, you know, so it's certainly anything but a black, I, I was going to call it Black Friday, but I think it was Black Monday in 1987. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong, was it Black Friday or Black Monday? Uh, but either way, it was a black day uh, for the stock market in 1987. That's when the plunge protection team was actually created. Uh, that was a, and, and a lot of people that are actually involved with these markets and working for banks and working for these institutions weren't even born then. Um, and, you know, the wise people understand all this. But that was a 22% drop that we had on Black Monday back in 1987. And uh, uh, substantial compared to Monday's drop of, uh, uh, what was it, 4%, 5%, and then the rebound back. So that was definitely not a catastrophic uh, drop. Uh, and oddly enough, uh, the plunge protection team, who I'm kind of saying was 
who stepped in. I believe the Fed stepped in along with the, uh, you know, the presidential working group, which is the PPT plunge protection team, as we talked about in yesterday's video. I believe they uh, uh, stepped into the markets on Monday. I believe they did it yesterday, and I also believe they're doing it today. Um, and uh, that's not a conspiracy. We're, we're pretty much certain that, that uh, well, it's pretty obvious now that that the Fed has been stepping in and buying equities and all these things to prop up markets. We just don't know how and why uh, or who because they're not that opaque about it. They, uh, the Fed doesn't have to tell us who they're bailing out or who they're giving money to. It's at their whim whether they, they want to or not. Uh, but as far as uh, 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 what's going on out there, it's just kind of crazy stuff here. And uh, let me kind of keep moving on here. I was going to talk, I was talking about the PPT and what, what we were seeing yesterday. but. Fed speak today, Fed job owns today, and let's see what it does to markets. And uh, uh, chances are, again, it's just job owning, folks. All right, let's take a look. Uh, remember, uh, this marks the first time stocks have broken below these levels since March 2020 crash. So that's pretty substantial. Secondly, the trend, as illustrated by the 50 day moving average, is now down. This again marks the first time this has been the case since March 2020. Yes, there have been periods in which the 50 day moving average was flat or sideways, but down, this is the first. Uh, so and there's the graph and the related graph and data you can see. So you can see the predicament here. Regardless of the bounce, the trend is down and it will take considerable time and strength to reverse this. Against the backdrop that the Fed is now tightening, sure it might not be as much tightening as everyone fears, but it's still tightening. Uh, the three times the Fed tried this stock's crash, those occasions were the tech bubble in the 90s, the housing bubble in the uh, 2000s, and the attempted normalization of late in 2000, 2018, 17 and 18, where they kind of, take a look at that, where they started to uh, tighten uh, policy. But you know what? The Fed is in a rock and a hard place right now. Uh, they, they, they need to do it. And, and as I said, I, I don't think that the, uh, uh, I don't think that the, uh, uh, the the rates, you know, even if they raise it up to uh, 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 50, you know what I'm saying, or, or, or do 50 increments, uh, uh, or 25, 25 is what they're probably going to come out with. But uh, uh, real rates, we're not going to see real rates uh, for a long time, folks. Uh, you just, we're just not going to see it. Well, anyways, we're not a stock program. We're talking about gold and silver primarily. And uh, what I'm curious about, and what we all should be curious about as precious metals people, is is, is this a dead cat bounce? How do we play this? Um, I think uh, personally that uh, if, uh, you know, buy the dips, you know, we are in a bull market. Do what the stock people did for years and years, in which hopefully the smart ones are not doing right now uh, at this moment. Uh, buy the freaking dips. Uh, we're in a, uh, uh, a long-term gold bull market. It's, it's been happening since 2016. Uh, so it's been a good strategy to buy the dips on gold and silver, especially silver, because silver is just stupidly cheap. Uh, let me do a quick refresh here and see where markets are right now. We're still doing pretty well. If you take a look at gold, gold is uh, sitting above its 200-day moving average, uh, which is, uh, around, I think, around the 1810 mark so far. Uh, we're off by 13 bucks, but big deal. We're still sitting in that mid-1800 uh, range. Uh, I was a little concerned with silver this week. I mean, look, look at the, well, let's first talk about gold. 1832.33 was the low, 1850 the high. So overnight markets, we're kind of trading in that 1830 to 1850 range, and we're sitting a little bit above the low right now. Um, and considering everything that's happening out there, this is pretty good for metals. Uh, but I am a little bit suspicious. I think that they might hammer silver today, uh, maybe even gold. But I think they're gonna, they might hammer silver uh, when, when the Fed starts talking, or they might do it tomorrow. Uh, it's always around these type of events in the past that the uh, monkey hammering, the manipulation would start to take place when, when, when the Fed started job owning. And uh, it, it just, when it happens typically. So let's see if we get monkey hammered uh, today or tomorrow on the uh, crooked Crimex markets. Uh, let's take a look at uh, 2363 is the low, 2399 is the high. You know, we are, for all intents and purposes, right there sitting at about $24. Uh, I know, it's off about, <laughs> what, 18 cents or 17 and a half cents, but we're, we're there. And uh, platinum hanging on to its gains, too. And look at that, platinum in green, as is palladium. Maybe this is a tell. Uh, for a while, platinum seemed to be uh, leading the way for gold and silver, as strange as that may sound. But there was a little trend that I started to see where, um, if platinum was up in the morning or during the day, that day uh, gold and silver actually followed shortly after. And that trend kind of continued for a little while. How did I notice the trend? Well, I like colors. I would see two reds here and a green here like I did here. And that pattern was existing for a little while. Platinum would go up and all of a sudden these would go into the green. Uh, and then uh, the opposite too, platinum would turn red, why these were green, uh, gold and silver. 
and uh, and gold and silver would start to drop with platinum. But I haven't seen that that kind of correlation or that uh, that kind of trend that I saw for a little bit. And again, these things come and go, and if you trade them, you probably get hurt. Well. Uh, let's take a look at the uh, well, the low uh, twenty-five dollar range there. Basically, those fifty cent ranges we're talking about with silver, which I think are very healthy. Um, let's see what happens again when the Fed starts jawboning today. Let's see if the manipulators come out. Uh, I think, you know, if they raise rates, and I think the Fed has to raise rates, uh, we may see some monkey hammering in the metals markets uh, uh, today, or again uh, tonight or tomorrow morning. Uh, that's just my opinion. I think if we hold these levels. Uh, for the next day or two. If these levels hold on, then we're probably good for the rest of the week. <laughs> uh, again, don't trade on that advice. This is my opinion, and I'm not an advisor of any sort. I'm just sharing what I learned and sharing my knowledge with you guys. Uh, so let's, uh, I was going to look at 24-hour charts, but Kitco has been down uh, all morning since like 840 or something like that. Let me do a quick, let me see if they're back up again. Uh, the price hasn't changed on silver. I mean, on gold, look at 1846, and silver's still stuck at uh, uh, 2393. Last I looked, so I think there's problems with the Kitco site for sure. I even looked at their spot prices, all metal quotes, and uh, I think they're look at that 1846, uh, and they're stuck on the 849 time. And there you go, 2393. So Kitco's down. Can't show you the 24-hour chart today, but big deal. Um, we kind of know what happened overnight here. So let's. Uh, where, where are we? I'm moving out of the uh, Kitco site. Let's take a look at the stock market right now. Boy, man, there's some gyrations going on there. Uh, I seen it up 400 something points earlier today. Uh, and again, you can take a look at this. Uh, where is that? 34,000. We're right there. And uh, yeah, take a look at this gyrations. I mean, that's that's pretty big, up and down. What is going on here? It's up currently right now. Gold's down a little bit. Gold's the only thing in the red right there. But still, we're well above our uh, we're well above our 200-day moving average. I believe that uh, uh, the Dow and SP and NASDAQ are below their 50-day moving average, I think is what we were just reading. So uh, again, is this a, or is what we're seeing here with equities markets is it just kind of a, uh, what we were calling a dead cat bounce. I like that chart. It's pretty cool. Poor cat. Well, uh, perhaps maybe today is a dead cat bounce. Maybe that's what we're seeing right now. But uh, uh, again, as far as precious metals go, I'm thinking I'd buy the dips, man. I would just continue buying the dips when we see them. And could we get a good dip uh, in the next day or two? I, if we do, I, I think it's a great opportunity to purchase metals. Again, my opinion, folks, um, uh, because I, you know, if I, <laughs> I don't want to be this financial, not financial. I'm not even close to that. Uh, not even attempting to be, but uh, I, I don't want to be uh, uh, an advisor uh, uh, here with gold and silver. And, I mean, the, I can advise you on what the best products to buy are, but my advice when it comes to what markets are going to do and, and where you should put your money, nah, you make your own decision. Uh, don't listen to anybody. Your gut is not, if you keep learning like I am and, and you keep getting more information, more data, um, your decision is probably better than some of the highest price advisors in gold out there. I don't even know who they are. So <laughs> uh, let's let's uh, go back to uh, where are we going here? All right. So markets are kind of uh, in the green here. Gold's in the red a little bit, and so is silver. Good time to buy. Cryptos are all over the place. Take a look at those swings. Where is that? The one month. There's your one month. Let's take a look at the one week. Uh, take a look at that. I mean. 43 a week, man. Take a look at 43 down to 32,000, almost a $10,000 drop. Man, that is a crazy casino right there. That's for damn sure. Uh, currently sitting at $38,000. Um, uh, so volatile. Uh, and it definitely is not a long term investment for sure. I don't believe that at all. Just too much volatility, and they don't, and it doesn't have the uh, 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 track record. And that's all I'm going to say about that today. Uh, what did I want to uh, go into? Oh, I know what I wanted to do. Products. I wanted to talk to you about some different products. I'm going to type in JM Bullion here, pull up their page. I advertise to beat JM Bullion, SD Bullion, and Atmex on uh, their, their reasonably priced good products. Uh, when I say reasonably priced, you know, m my, my philosophy when it comes to uh, buying precious metals, I don't care if it's a square, I don't care if it's a round shape, uh, uh, whatever shape it's in, bar shape, uh, coin or not coin, as long as you're buying a recognizable, industry recognizable product 
at the lowest possible premium, that is the best thing you can do. I mean, if you got an itch to buy shiny shit that, that looks pretty, uh, you know, get into rare coins or something like that. Get into uh, uh, buying rare stuff where it'll truly pay off. But I mean, not buying overpriced, uh, uh, let me say overpriced, it is overpriced, I'm sorry, I'm just going to say it. Not uh, 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 shiny uh, silver coins with high mintages that, are, that have uh, huge premiums. Well. I think the best deals out there, without a doubt, and, and what we will beat at MexJM and SD Bullion on pretty much is most of your generic products. Uh, I love Silver Eagles, but they're overpriced. I have them here. I will beat their prices as well on Silver Eagles, uh, but I wouldn't recommend them to you. I just think they're too much money. Where we would probably steer you to is, uh, let's take a look at their in-stock silver because the rest of the prices on there are nonsense. Uh, and as you know, don't forget, this is the caveat, as low as, they do have so when you see this price of 27.44, realize that. Well, let's take a look and see what how many they want for those. Uh, let's select a payment. Of course, checks are always cheaper, and let's see what kind of quantity. So, basically, 27.44. If you're buying 500 or more, um, that's a dollar cheaper than that. Boy, I can beat the hell out of these prices pretty easily. But uh, that's a, uh, a dollar cheaper than if you were buying. You know, the the average Joe out there is buying like 100 ounces or less. Uh, substantially different right there so so and I actually had a customer come in the other day and he was he was saying JM has them really cheap man you know for like 20 coins or 50 coins or something like that I, I said well did you take a look and see that uh, that is their minimum uh, or they actually have quantities that you have to meet to buy them at those levels so in order to buy these at 2744 you have to buy 500 or more and again I can beat that price and your local dealer should be able to beat that as well um, so as I said, if you don't live in South Florida, you don't live in my neighborhood, in my immediate area, uh, find yourself a good local dealer before you buy online. I think there's a lot of good reasons for that. Uh, number one, keeping the money in your town, keeping the money in your city or wherever, your state even. Even if you have to drive a couple hours to find a good dealer, I recommend it. Uh, the other reason is you want to develop a relationship with someone in the event that you need to sell this stuff and you want to sell this stuff because shipping it out not a good option for most people. I know they try to make it easy, but not a good option for most people. You want to be able to say, all right, I'm going to pick my target day when the price of silver or gold is this particular level, uh, and I'm going to go up and visit that dealer that's going to give me a good price. Uh, again, even if you have to drive an hour or two, uh, it's much going to be much more convenient to find yourself a good local dealer. Uh, let's take a look at, uh, uh, again, I think the best deal that they have right there in one ounce is I'd avoid Silver Eagles. I'd avoid all this fancy stuff, maple leaves. Uh, do they even have maple leaves? I would avoid Krugerrands. I mean, I can, again, I can beat prices on these, on these, uh, uh, and a lot of the stuff. Some of the stuff I don't carry, though. I, I don't carry uh, certain designs like they have here, and big deal. Who cares? You're not buying design on these. Remember, folks, you're trying to buy the cheapest least expensive premium, the cheapest premium you can for a industry recognizable product. Uh, and what falls in that category, definitely one ounce generics, 10 ounce generics, and 100 ounce generics. Uh, and let's, where are they at for their 100 ounces? Let me just kind of see if, I don't see, there's 10 ounce bars. Uh, again, probably the best deal they have. JM Bullion actually owns uh, Silvertown Mint, so they can naturally have better prices on Silvertown products than most people can get. But still, I can sell their own product cheaper than they can so uh, for the secondary market if it's available. But again, I don't care if it's made by Silvertown, Hamilton Mint, um, or any of the other uh, uh, mints across the United States and outside. Um, as long as it's a recogni industry recognizable name, I'm good with it, so Silvertown's not a big deal. Uh, but again, that's the best deal that they have right there, the ones, the tens, and I'm looking for hundreds now. Uh, kilos aren't bad. but. Kilos, when you go back to sell them, dealers often would call them what you called off, uh, not off weight, uh, oh my gosh, let me tell you, odd weight, odd weight, odd weight bars. And uh, the, the dealer industry for years and years has been paying less for what we call odd weight bars. And kilograms are considered an odd weight bar in the United States, uh, uh, typically, or has been in the past. I'm not sure how that's working now, but I would avoid the kilos, try to stick with ones, tens, and, and hundreds. Uh, again, that's my opinion, but you gotta remember the one thing that I can advise people on that I'm really, really good at is product. Product and premiums. Uh, I'm not advising people when to buy. Uh, uh, and really, 
Um, well, I am kind of who to buy from, but I'm not advising people when to buy, when's the best time, how much you should spend. That's, you know, that's something that you've got to figure out on your own. Uh, but I can tell you what the best deals are on product, that's for sure. And I can tell you, if you're in South Florida and you come to my store, you're going to get a much better deal than you will online for a lot of these things. Now, a couple folks out there are going to say, well, Brian, there's also SD Boy and there's also uh, Atmex. Uh, but I have found the JM is actually the 800-pound gorilla out there. Uh, SD has some good prices as well, and they run specials occasionally. Uh, and again, I can beat Atmex, SD, and all these guys. And hopefully your local dealer can. Uh, the reason I talk about these three guys, too, and there are a lot of other uh, vendors out there online, but these vendors are big. I believe they're trustworthy. Uh, I don't think they're going to go belly up anytime soon, but you never know anyway. Uh, but uh, uh, that's why I use these three guys, and they consistently have good product, okay? Uh, but, but are there other guys out online, smaller dealers that may beat the pants off uh, a JM, Atmex, and SD? Sure there are. Uh, but again, I'm trying to go for the big guys out there that are consistent and uh, uh, have large amounts of product, and you know they've been around for a while and likely not to disappear anytime soon. Uh, that's why I use those three. Well, uh, I don't see 100-ounce bars on here, but I can tell you um, there's 10-ounce bars. I mean, are hundreds down at the bottom? Uh, let's see here. Let me take a look and see if they have a, I don't know their website real well. And actually, I'm trying to see where the hundreds are and what price they're getting for hundreds. I don't know how competitive it is, but uh, where there it is, 100 <laughs> Istanbul Gold Refinery, sil Gold Refinery Istanbul uh, Silver Bar. Uh, that's not a bad price. Uh, again, I think I got Valcombis and some other brands that I can sell you for that price or cheaper. And don't forget, that is the as low price, which means you probably got to buy five of them or more. Uh, didn't look, so I can't say that for sure. Uh, so those are the best products out there, in my opinion. Uh, you know, while this kind of stuff is cool and a tiger is cool, it's still, you know, uh, uh, 270 again, their lowest price, probably a dollar more. So let's say if you bought one of these, it's probably a 285 bucks, probably. And uh, let's uh, take a look at uh, what your alternatives here, too, which are the 10 ounce generics. So you're going to buy that for 285 or you're going to buy this 10 ounce silver bar for uh, $273, where you're going to save 12 bucks. And I know most of you are saying, 12 bucks, oh, big deal, Brian. But you know what? You're not going to get that 12 bucks back. And the truth of the matter is, is uh, you know, if you watch the pennies, the dollars will take care of themselves. And that's very true. So watch your pennies when you're buying gold and silver. If you got the collector bug or you got the shiny shit bug, uh, buy yourself some rare coins or some jewelry or something. Uh, or sculptures or something to satisfy that itch. But if you're buying bullion, stay the hell away from this overpriced shit. Um, not shit. It's good product. It's just overpriced. Uh, and again, I love American Eagles. We're going to talk about uh, gold coins, and let's see what they have in stock. Same thing, I can beat the prices on most all these products. I don't think I have any Australia gold, and I believe that would cost more uh, than the products that I would recommend. And what are the products I'm going to recommend to you? I think right now, the best, the best deal out there, and they've even dropped like $5, uh, would be uh, gold one-ounce bars. I think we have Valcombis, Perths, or, or one of the better brands best deal out there, folks. And I can't see them on their page here. Let me see if I can uh, in stock gold. There we go. That's what I needed to do. Uh, and there you go, right there. That is the best deal out there. Look at the considerable difference here. As low, again, as low as they're going to, I think they're, well, let's see what they're getting for, you know, 10 ounces or less. All right. Uh, there we go. Oh, I got stuff in my cart. <laughs> uh, 25 or plus, 25 plus ounces you could get at that 19, 12 uh, Mark, again, I can beat that price. But if you're the typical guy out there that's just stacking a couple ounces of gold here and there, uh, they're going to hit you for 19.22.94, which is still a good price when you compare it to. Um, I'm going to use the 25 plus price. I just want you folks to be aware that that when I'm looking at this stuff and quoting these prices, uh, that that is a quantity price that they're 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 showing here. And uh, let's take a look. Uh, best deals, again, are definitely going to be uh, Perth, uh, Valcombi, and uh, uh, whatever um, uh, Swiss, the Swiss one-ounce bars that you can find uh, in gold. Cheapest deals, I got great prices on them. There's Rand, actually, and that's a good price there, too. Look at that. So I'm going to use their 25-plus ounce price here. Now, like I said, this is for 25 ounces plus, but look, look at a considerable difference here. Uh, 25 bucks a coin on 10 coins, that's 250 bucks. So you could buy 10 ounces of this, one ounce rant, and it's a great product, there's nothing wrong with it. They got it on sale too, folks. <laughs> uh, but you could buy 10 ounces of this, uh, 
uh, well, hang on a second. 10 ounces of this plus, let me think what the difference would be, uh, 250, oh man, plus uh, like almost 10 ounces of silver. So you could buy this and 10 ounces of silver, uh, 10 of these and 10 ounces of silver for the same price you could buy 10 maple leaves for. So what, w what would you rather have uh, for that money? Would you rather buy for the same price one ounce gold Canadian maple leaf? Or would you have rather have 10 gold bars plus, gosh, I keep, sorry about that, I keep clicking on that thing. Um, my little pad is so sensitive here, I keep my finger on it. But, uh, or would you rather buy uh, uh, 10 of these with, with, and have 20 ounces, of, or what was it? Yeah, 10 ounces of silver with that for the same price as one of those. And, and it's even worse when you look at these. Uh, that's $350 more for 10 ounces than this. That's another 10 or 15 ounces of silver. So you could buy a one ounce gold bar plus maybe about 15 ounces of silver or so. I'm just kind of winging it there. For the same price, you can get a Gold Eagle. So now do you know what, now you know why I like the lower price products. Hey, listen, I'd love to tell you buy American. I'd love to tell you, uh, and it's a pretty product. It's a great product. I love the Buffaloes too, beautiful coins. Uh, but we're not buying coins here. We're not buying collectibles. We're not, there's no advantage to buying these products versus the one ounce. In fact, there's an, a disadvantage because of the premium. As I said, if you can buy one of these and get 15 ounces of silver with it for the same price of just a simple one ounce of gold, you're way ahead of the game. Think of this about that way, folks. So, um, and what other good products they have? I, as I said, I advertise to beat all these products. Um, we also get some things like uh, I had access to uh, the St. Helena Angels, which were really super cool, and they, I still had them at a cheaper price than what they've got Maple Leafs out here and the, uh, uh, what is it, the uh, Britannias and stuff. Uh, I'm all about price point, folks. So uh, if you want really great prices and you want someone that can beat these guys uh, and give you great advice face-to-face, -face, come in and see me anytime between 10 and 4, Mondays through Fridays. Or find yourself a good local dealer and ask him if he can beat the big online guys. Uh, where are we going from here, man? There's JM right there. I'm going to talk about a uh, couple things. Let's just take a look at markets real quick. I'm just curious since you're here with me. Uh, I'm curious where we are right now. Uh, the Fed's going to speak shortly. I don't even know when. And we're just off a little bit sideways. Silver's off a little sideways. And again, platinum, is that a tell? Does that mean the rest of the other metals are going to go up? Let's see. Um, and where are we at as far as uh, the stock market right now? Yeah, gyrating upward a little bit. So again, is this a dead cat bounce? I just don't know. What's your opinion? Let me know in comments today if you would. Also, don't forget to hit that likes and subscribe button as well. I appreciate that. Uh, let's take a look at, uh, uh, I like to let you know that I'm on Wall Street Silver. The, uh, it's a great website. The enthusiasm out there is just wonderful. I post my videos out there daily. And I'd like to thank the uh, forum uh, moderators and, and, and such and the uh, members out there and, uh, for letting me post out there. And I, I get a good feel that they, they like what I'm doing. So, <laughs> And uh, I like what they do as well. And again, a lot of enthusiasm has them out here. So if you're a silver stacker and you haven't uh, checked out this site, it's pretty cool. A lot of young guys too, which I really like seeing. A lot of young folks. Uh, not guys, uh, ladies and men, uh, and people that identify as others. So a lot of nice younger folks out there on uh, Wall Street Silver. Uh, let's take a look at, uh, oh, I let you know too, I've been getting some extra subscribers here. I am on Getter now, G-E-T-T-O-R. Uh, I might, uh, we're, we're, we're trying to, open, I should have done it quicker, but we're trying to get on some more platforms. I'll let you know as we go. Uh, maybe a tr Twitter account, I don't know, and uh, maybe uh, some other account stuff. I'm staying the hell away from Facebook, that's for sure. Can't stand that company anymore. Uh, let's uh, move over to uh, yesterday's video. Is this the big one? Question mark, exclamation sign. Don't know. Based on today with this bounce back, uh, are we going back to what the norm was, which is continuing to hit new highs in the equity markets, or is this market pretty much toast right now? What will the decline look like? Will it be like 2008 where it just blew up overnight? Or have they learned enough, not government, but bankers have learned enough and Wall Street to allow this market to slowly unwind, which is, I think is probably what we're looking at right now. We're not looking at an explosion, an implosion, uh, like the pricking of a balloon. We're, let, we're looking at them purposely slowly letting the air out of the balloon, all right, until it deflates <laughs> and leaves everyone holding the bag, of course, except for the corporate guys. Uh, let's take a look at the uh, comments from yesterday. Man, lots of comments here. 
and uh, I'm going to uh, get through them real quick, and I'd like to thank everybody for watching here. All right, for those of you that get motion sickness, I'm going to do a spin to the bottom here and work my way up. So close your eyes otherwise. Ready? There you go. Oh, gosh, I even got me a little wheezy. <laughs> uh, as I always say, I like to thank all of you for commenting and watching my videos. Uh, I'm acknowledging all these names here. I really appreciate it. Uh, I'm going to see if I can hit a few questions since we do. You know, if my videos keep getting more subscribers, um, I don't know if I can keep up with the uh, uh, comments and this, but I will do my best. Uh, Tom says it's balmy three degrees and <laughs> stop my whining. Tom, you're absolutely right. But you know what? Uh, I could use a little cold weather, man. I'm a Florida guy. I've been down here since I was a little kid. Uh, for me, it's nice once in a while to get a little cold. Nice change, if you know what I'm saying. But thanks for watching and thanks for the comment. And I'll do my best to stop whining, Tom. <laughs> Johnny Boy says you need an endearing chimp sound with every month. Ooh, ooh, by the way, and copyright it too, huh? <laughs> Ah, that's not a bad idea. Thank you. Make it a little more interesting. Thank you, Johnny Boy. I appreciate that. And uh, some really cool comments that you made here. And thanks for watching. Uh, all mature systems are the same. UK's been like that for decades. Stock market's the only thing along with me. Oh, yep. Man, you know what? Also, I like about the commenters out here and the people that watch my videos. You're all smart. You're all very smart people, independent thinkers. I like that. Uh, hey, G, uh, if I do open an online store, uh, I'll let you know. Uh, but meanwhile, you know, keep trying to buy it locally, you know, keep that money local. And even if I open an online store, I'd still want to kind of recommend that, that you guys, you know, keep relationships with other people, you know, other dealers and stuff like that. So uh, I really think that dealing locally is very important. I have mixed feelings about online uh, on a lot of reasons. Again, because the money just leaves. It just leaves. It leaves your neighborhood. You know, when I make money here, I spend it locally. I spend it at the restaurants, the stores, the small businesses mostly is where I spend my money at. I go to the local fishing store. I don't uh, 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 go to Sportsman's Paradise or whatever the heck that giant fishing store is to buy my stuff. Even though I can get it delivered a little bit cheaper online, I get great advice when I go to my local fishing store. And I'll tell you my local fishing stores, T and R Tackle. Uh, they don't give me anything for saying that, by the way. <laughs> but what they do give me at T and R Tackle, a local business, is you're buying offline, you, you, you don't get the advice. I go over there, one of the guys a tournament fisherman, all right, uh, and they've all been fishing for decades. They're, you know, the, the, the combined experience at TNR Tackle is huge. And I'll go over there and I'll start, you know, buy, looking at lures and things that I would have bought online, and they say, no, 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 don't buy that, or, or they'll say, ah, here's a better way to do it, or here's how you fish these. You don't get that online, folks. You just don't get it. Uh, and I'm very loyal to uh, local businesses as well. All right, got off on a tangent. Uh, appreciate your watching there, Z, and have a good day. Uh, William says, during the crash 29, didn't the equivalent of government plunge protection team try the same thing? It crashed anyway. Yeah, I think the plunge protection team, they can just go out there and temporarily prop up markets. I mean, take a look at Monday, that 1,100-point reversal. That wasn't retail or, or wholesale uh, buyers out there. That was intervention, it, absolutely, without a doubt in my mind. Uh, you can feel it in your gut. You can kind of see it, and you know they do it, all right? That was intervention, but it still started going down again Tuesday. They intervened again, I believe, and today even I think they intervened. So I think they've been pumping some money in this for a couple days, but at what point do they just have to let it fall? Or maybe it'll stable out. Again, is this a dead cat bounce? I don't know. Let me know in your opinions today. Uh, or in the comments section, I'm sorry. This section. <laughs> uh, Berkeley County says investing in crypto should be, oh, Jesus, you idiots. Uh, I'll remove that. God, it's a nonstop freaking battle with these morons. You know, look at the view, the 20 replies. By the way, if you see these on other websites, it's, it's one person. They're answering themselves. Crypto is the new gold I want to watch. And eventually down here, they're going to give, oh, this guy made it. Mr. Thomas Thompson Gregory. Uh, can, are Nigerians named Thompson Gregory? <laughs> uh, this is probably some Nigerian scam out here. Uh, but earn me a profit of $25,530. You know what they prey on, folks? They prey on this. There's no force more potent in the modern world than stupidity fueled by greed. That's how they make their money, these idiots right here. Um, and again, this is all the same person that's talking right here. And then somewhere down here, He's going to give us his phone number. Let's see if he does it. There you go. There's the phone number. Pointy sign. You, you idiots. 
Uh, anyway, I'll delete that. Uh, uh, I'm constantly, we're constantly deleting these things, folks. So if they show up on my, my feed on the comment section, uh, I encourage you actually to make complaints about them too. There's a little complaint button over here. You, you can hit that, ready? And uh, I can hide user from channel or report. You can report, that's what I'd recommend you do. I do it all the time, unwanted commercial content or spam. And there they go, all right? Uh, but you need to do that whenever you see those idiots out there posting on mine or any, any other uh, sites. Uh, they need to go. But first, insult them first and then delete them. <laughs> uh, let's see. Uh, hey, thanks, Johnny Boy. Glad you found my channel. I guess I answered your stuff a little bit earlier. Joey, always nice to see your comments as well. Hope your coffee is good as mine. <laughs> uh, random question. Why are Jane Boy and Atmex spot prices always seven higher, $7 higher than Kitco spot on gold? Hmm. Well, took my sip of coffee, sorry. I can tell you uh, today it's definitely higher uh, because Kitco is broke today. I think their uh, site is broke because the, the prices haven't changed all morning. Uh, however, I have noticed the same thing that the JM Boy, even JM Boy and the Atmex spot prices are different from each other. And they're uh, not always, but different. Uh, and they're also different from the official real prices that I look at, okay? So they all kind of run with their own prices a little bit. Not many people know that. Um, and I also have found that they fudge it a little bit in their favor. I believe they do. You know, by, you know, silver could be a few cents or a quarter or something like that. Gold could be, you know, as much as a dollar or a couple bucks difference. Uh, but I believe they, they, they fudge it a little bit too because they do use their own uh, programs to put these spots on their pages. Uh, again, just my opinion, can't tell you for sure. Uh, Russell King says if the plunge protection team has all kinds of money to keep the market falling, then I can see the CPI exploding. Their balance sheet will be telling. Uh, that may be true, but interestingly enough, uh, if I'm correct, uh, the way they would do it, and I read it yesterday, they use some kind of uh, trading strategy that doesn't show up on the books when they do this. So, uh, but as far as uh, showing up in the uh, money supply, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know how they do it. Uh, oh, I think they do it through indexes, actually, uh, where you can't really see who's doing it and how. Uh, but again, uh, I'm not that educated in that. And if you know more than I do, definitely put it in the comments section and I'll read it tomorrow. Uh, yep, let's go along here, Jeremy. Um, thanks. Oh, wait, that's true. Yesterday's video, we had, uh, we had a lot of manatees, or what we call in Florida, sea cows. Uh, and that's from the Teco Big Bin. That's pretty cool. Thanks for telling me that, Jeremy. I didn't know that. Uh, great stuff as always. Thanks, Brad. Uh, isn't the CFTC supposed to have four or five commissioners? No, they haven't for years. I think there's one guy, but I believe they're starting to fill those positions. I don't. I think I read something about that, uh, and it's down to one. You would be correct. Oh, sorry about that, folks. I am uh, going to shut that phone off real quick, and I should have done it earlier. Didn't mean to do that in your ear. Um, and isn't uh, one a former bank lobbyist? Yes. And as I said, a lot. I don't have any faith in these uh, uh, government uh, um, agencies, uh, regulating agencies, especially the CFTC. They've been so inept for so long. Uh, but let's see what happens. Uh, or perhaps Biden's nominee revised me as on city. Yeah. Well, that's what I was talking about too. Uh, Look, uh, uh, Steve Muchen, Muchen, I don't even know how to pronounce his name, I don't care either, uh, but who was the last Secretary uh, of State, I think, not Secretary of State, um, pfft, oh jeez, I'm forgetting my, all my stuff here, but uh, uh, he worked for Goldman, I believe, or one of the big companies. They go back and forth, you know. A lot of times these people that work for uh, these government agencies will go to work for the company afterwards, or vice versa. So yeah, there's a lot of bullshit going on there. Um, Silver coin hunter says I'm a gold and silver hoarder, but a coin collector. I know this is an area you are close to. Yeah, it is, sir. I would like to really see you talk about rare coins once in a while. Uh, man, I've been talking about this for some time that I'm going to do a rare coin. I mean, I'm really that is my specialty. I mean, I'm good at it. Uh, so, yeah, I'm going to, but but what, I won't do it on my daily videos. I think what I'll do is I'll just start producing some videos on rare coins and talking about stuff uh, because that's another area that I'm an expert in. I'm really truly an expert in rare coins. Uh, and uh, um, uh, paper money as well, both U.S. and foreign. Uh, I'm not a specialist in certain areas, but I'm a general practitioner, if you kind of get that uh, feeling for what I'm saying there. Uh, but I will, Silver Coin Hunter, and I really appreciate uh, you bringing that up. It's something that I've been talking about and threatening everybody with for a while, and uh, I really do need to do it. You are correct. Uh, and thanks for watching. I appreciate that. Well, uh, as I said, please hit that like and subscribe button. Who am I? Uh, well, I'll tell you that in a second here, but first, uh, my, my uh, quote for the year, my theme, my meme for the year is think for yourself and question authority, folks. Uh, this is the most important thing we can all do. Don't let corporate media think for you. 
uh, and always question the uh, officials out there that are trying to tell you what to do or, uh, you know, that's my, uh, uh, that's my feelings. Think for yourself, question authority, and maybe we won't get into the kind of economic and uh, political and societal messes that we're in right now if we do that kind of thing. Definitely don't let corporate media think for you. Uh, well, again, who am I? I'm Brian Kuzmar, and uh, I've been down in this store since 1995. I started in business in 1977 with my father. Uh, he's up in Boca Raton. So I'm a second generation dealer in rare coins, paper money, and precious metals. I also do jewelry, artwork, antiques, collectibles, but hey, I'm not going to brag here. So I kind of keep it simple with you guys here with precious metals. That was my original videos were all, but my videos are all about precious metals. But I am going to start adding some things with. Uh, um, what else? Uh, 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 rare coins uh, and maybe even jewelry and watches and some other things at some point. So uh, thanks for watching. Um, I'm here 10 to 4 Mondays through Fridays. And again, we've been in the same location in Lauderdale by the Sea since uh, 1995. And if you got any questions, call me at 954-493-8811 between the hours of 10 and 4. Uh, and if you don't live in my area, as I said, please find yourself a good local dealer. And uh, if you got any questions for me, put them in the comment section. Well, that's it. Thanks for watching. Have yourself a great day, and let's see what happens with the Fed today. Bye now.